Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about the um, process of a muscle contraction. Uh, before we get started, uh, you should definitely know the anatomy of a muscle before studying this topic because it's going to be very important. And if you guys want me to do a video on muscle anatomy, I'll be more than happy to do so, just let me know. So to get started, uh, anything, well most things that happen to your body uh, start off in your brain. So you basically send signals and you know for example before you raise your hand in class or whatever there are a bunch of things that happen that we're going to talk about before you're able to raise your hand all right so first things first um an action potential arrives at a terminal button of neuromuscular muscular junction and that happens through a motor neuron so the action potential is going to travel and it's going to get here at a neuromuscular junction what a neuromuscular junction is it's the, um, it's a junction between the neuron and a muscle fiber, hence the name. So basically what happens is once the action potential reaches the neuromuscular junction, it, it'll stimulate acetylcholine release. And what, if you guys don't know what acetylcholine is, which again you should know, it's a uh, chemical messenger in, uh, the, that is uh, stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum right here in your muscle. And once acetylcholine is released, it's going to diffuse across the cleft and it's going to trigger an action potential in the muscle fiber itself. So now you have this muscle, uh, this action potential running through your muscle fiber and it's going to move across the surface membrane and into your muscle fibers through something called the T-tubules. Um, the T-tubules are basically little tubules um, that will help um, that will help the action potential travel through the muscle and they're basically located in the sarcoplasmic reticulum so along this area right here and then once an action potential is triggered in the T tubules um, there it'll trigger calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. So it is important to know that you have many calcium ions that are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum that are ready for this action. Then once this happens, we are going to move on to the contraction cycle where the muscle contraction takes place. So now you know that uh, the sarcoplasmic reticulum released those calcium ions. Now what do those calcium ions do? So they're going to basically bind to the troponin on the thin filaments. And if you guys don't know what thin filaments are, they're also known as actin. So you have your actin here and your myosin here. Again, I'm assuming you guys know muscle anatomy. So once calcium will bi uh, binds to troponin, it causes the tropomyosin here to change shape. So let me just make you guys familiar with the picture over here. Uh, this string looking... Um, strand here is uh, the orange one, the darker one here is going to be our troponin and the little uh, yellow heads with the uh, black dots are our tropomycin and let's say that the black dots are the myosin binding, binding sites. So here calcium is the purple circular thing here is going to attach to our troponin and what it's going to do it's going to cause the binding sites on actin to to be exposed for the myosin bridge. So it's basically before this happens, you have tropomyosin here and your um, troponin. They're very uh, tangled together and they're kind of like hugging each other. And once the calcium comes in, it'll kind of release that tension and it'll expose the, head, the binding sites for myosin, which are located on the tropomyosin. All right, so then what happens next here is the myosin bridges once the um, the uh, myosin, I'm sorry, the myosin binding uh, heads over here are exposed. The myosin heads will uh, bind to it because you know they they they'll finally be exposed for it to bind. And now this binding will trigger a, a cross bit, the cross bridge to bend. This is this right here is our cross bridge. So once this cross bridge bends, something called the power stroke will take place and it's going to uh, take place with the help of ATP. And a power stroke is basically the um, cross bridge when it bends, it'll pull the thin filaments right here toward the center of the sarcomere. 
so it's going to pull the thin filaments this way and this is where you know our sliding is taking place all right now what happens next is the of course this is happening with the help of ATP once the uh, power stroke takes place uh, the bridge is going to detach from actin unless there is calcium ions that are present that will help another power stroke take place. But if there aren't any uh, calcium ions, which means there aren't any action potentials, the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to take on those calcium ions since they're not needed anymore and everything is going to relax and stop until another action potential takes place. So mind you guys, this is a cycle. So obviously, action potentials will have to be signaling really fast for this cycle to continue or else it'll just stop and the calcium ions will be taken up and everything will just be in a very relaxed situation. Now I've summed up all the steps here and you're more, more than welcome to pause the video and study those steps.